Uh, joining us is a lady who's been on with us in the last year plus as things have escalated. Uh, and she's since gone public with her full name and uh, who she is and been on national TV in Australia. Her family uh, left Australia because uh, basically Assad ran some of them out. Uh, so they don't like Assad and, they, and they're Sunni. They were formerly you know, part of the uh, you know, ruling party and the top folks in the country. Uh, but that said, she now for the last year plus has been very, very critical uh, of what's happening there because it's foreign governments bringing in Al-Qaeda to carry out unbelievable atrocities, blowing up churches, you name it. And she's been on for over a year. The videos, the news articles are on Infowars.com saying they're going to stage a fake chemical attack. They've been caught staging some smaller ones. Look at who put out the report. But, but Syrian girl, tell folks who you really are on air, a little bit about yourself, because I think that's important, what your real name is for folks that don't know, and, and your Twitter, your Facebook up front, so that they understand, and so they can go read the articles you've written, the videos you did going back over a year that have all proven 100% accurate, and then tell us, even though, again, you've been opposed to Assad, you, you know, you've joined supporting that government because it is criminal to offensively come in and engage in mass murder. Uh, so, so, so break down the latest from family you've still got living there of uh, what's happening as you join us uh, from Australia. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot for having me again. Um, you know, it's a great podium to have that's independent. One of the few podiums that actually listens to um, this voice, this message that is being drowned out because I actually don't want to fuel the war in Syria. My intentions from the start is to try to expose the reality of the bigger, grander scheme that's on being played here. And personally, um, my family were not exiled from Syria, but they, my previous, um, well, my grandfather was in government deposed by the Ba'ath Party coup. So my family as a whole from both sides have always been opposition. And I grew up, um, you know, being um, against the government, being told about how terrible the crimes of the government were against, you know, my own family members, some of which went to jail under suspicion of being Muslim Brotherhood. So um, for 20 years, in fact. So I'm not going to come here and deny that the government wasn't a dictatorship. It wasn't corrupt, um, that, you know, that people weren't angry with it. And I'm not going to say that there, there wasn't, you know, a legitimate reason for people to want to create that change. But the fact is that that was totally exploited. Um, and even pre-planned by the foreign agendas, the US, um, NATO, uh, basically the global elite, as you call them. Absolutely, and, and again, your real name is Mimi Alahem. You've had a lot of courage, uh, Justin. How long since you went public? It's been about a year and a half, right? I believe so, yes. It was, early, er, it was early last year, but, but this has been going on now for two and a half years, and they call them activists. They have tanks, they have Chinese tow missiles, they have U.S. tow missiles, they have stingers, they have heat-seeking missiles, they're blowing up churches, blowing up airports, blowing up markets, and they're called heroes on CNN. And so even though the father Assad was somewhat brutal, Compared to Al Qaeda, he was a good guy. Now it's correct to say that the 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 son trained in England was loosening things, though, or is that improper to say? No, it was definitely loosening things. Like every year, I would go back and I would see that people were more open, um, speaking more openly. The first step he took was to release some political prisoners, but whilst he was uh, doing something good on one hand. On the other hand, you could say that there was government um, failings in maybe his policy Absolutely. of opening the economy actually um, made the rich rich and the poor poor. Because well, Mimi, Mimi, uh, absolutely. Always ruling elites do. That's why you don't want a big centralized government. It will centralize the economy. That's just the way it is. So that said, we've shown the other side that your family's been opposition for 20 years. Now let's shift gears 
uh, into what's on record that the, the CIA, the NATO commandos, the heavy weapons, uh, the chemical attack that you over a year ago, you were the first person to say they're going to do a chemical false flag. Now, the Russians have said they've done that. They've caught them doing it before. What do you know about this latest attack right as the U.N. inspector showed up? Okay, well, as you exactly said, you know, this incident occurred a day after the U.N. arrived in Damascus. <clears throat> and the timing of it was, you know, the Syrian government actually requested the U.N. presence to investigate another incident, which was in Khan al-Asal in Aleppo. So actually the UN team was um, only kilometers away from the site because they were in Damascus when this happened. Exactly, so they don't want the last chemical attacks that have been proven fake certified so they did a new bigger one. It's illogical um, to, to think that the Syrian government is going to profit from this just by the way that the media is reacting to this. And, you know, one year to the day of this event, exactly, was Obama's red line speech. That's right. Of where he promised, you know, some sort of unnamed action if Syria were to use chemical weapons. And people inferred that that was a no-fly zone. And, you know, that was the same time that um, me and many other bloggers, Tony Cartolucci, were saying, you know, it looks like from the way they're posturing, that they want to create some kind of chemical incident to give them an excuse to to intervene in some way. Now, you know, I think it's absolutely undeniable that little children died in Damascus three days ago and that the images are shocking. And anyone can see, um, cannot deny that. And I'm not going to comment on the nature of the gas that was used. I'm going to leave that to experts. And I also don't want to implicate the rebels as a whole, because, you know, while you could say some of them are Al-Qaeda, some of them are foreign, some of them are thieves, you know, some of them um, would uh, have, as, we, as I showed on my channel, used a prisoner as an unwitting suicide bomber. Um, and this is part of the, the FSA, uh, that one of the groups under the FSA umbrella. Um, that did this, that's not an Al-Qaeda group. So um, I, I don't want to implicate them directly because I'm sure that some of them had families that live in that area. And I believe that they themselves are patsies to a global um, game that, you know, they're cannon fodder for. And they, the powers that be have managed to convince them that they're going to get armed, they're going to get um, no-fly zones, but the reality of the situation is, and what I do know, is that the U.S. doesn't attack countries that actually possess chemical weapons. And in order to achieve any kind of attack, they would first have to um, get rid of a country's chemical weapons. And this is one of the one of the reasons, one of the um, core causes for this war. Not only that, but of course they want to um, divide Syria up into many states. And they, they want to crush any um, rogue states, basically. Yeah, any state not run by Goldman Sachs, basically. Uh, so we'll uh, come right back on the other side and break that down. Europe's been conquered by Goldman Sachs. They actually brag about that. And J.P. Morgan uh, and the big royal families that sit atop it. And it is just unbelievable that this is going on. And right on time, uh, you have this chemical attack right when the inspectors are there. Mimi Alahim, known as Syrian Girl, before her identity was revealed by Australian TV News, um, is a family basically uh, self-exiled because of political reasons. They don't like Assad. But Assad was moving towards more of what you'd call a democratization and reaching out to the West. And I, I follow geopolitical developments. So was Gaddafi. He invested most of his money with Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan. And invited them all in, opened up, apologized. Boy, they set him up. Bam, brought in Al-Qaeda. And now they've wrecked the whole country. They don't want Africa being lifted up. They want them deindustrialized. In fact, the foundations complained about Libya. Libya was jacking up all of Africa. By jacking them up, by giving them aid, by creating an infrastructure. Globalists don't want anybody to have an infrastructure, folks, except them. It's called Agenda 21. It's military corporatism.
But that's, that's the New World Order. It's militarized corporatism. That's the best way to describe them right there, my term. Militarized corporatism. Scorched earth. And, and in closing, uh, they got, they've now got a lot of analysts saying this could lead to World War III with the Russians there. The Russians are saying it's a false flag. The, the rebels have been caught three other times doing these fake chemical things since the red line deal, but this one was bigger. Uh, and I'm so sad for all the forces that are there, but we know if the country's turned over to Al-Qaeda, that, I mean, in my uh, summation, what is that, 10 times worse than Assad? 20 times? Uh, your comments on that and other points and where you think this is going to go now. I think you headed exactly where I was going to go in that direction. I want to make it clear that as bad as the government used to be, what they have planned for to take power in Syria now is going to be 10 times worse, as you said. And you only need to look at history of what happened in Libya and what happened in Iraq to see that the U.S. government's intentions in the region was not democratization. You know, those governments, those new ones, tortured just as much as the previous ones, if not more so, only the, the country that they're in is, is completely decimated. That's the only difference. And, you know, the... The fact about Libya, as you said, you know, Gaddafi, he really fell for it. He opened up the gates. He thought, let's be friends. Um, they said in 2003, uh, he probably knew his country would be next on the list. So in 2003, after the Iraq invasion had already begun, he agreed to weapons of mass destruction disarmament. And he was attacked in 2011. And I just said, you know, the, the U.S., government is not going to attack a country that possesses weapons of mass destruction they first have to remove them and you know in, in but, Iraq, but from here on out let's just call it goldman sachs i mean they brag right, sure. they run the country so goldman sachs wants you to give up your wmds invest with them then they bring in al-qaeda well they destroy your country and then they make money by rebuilding it yeah of course that? exactly right you know it's 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 not even the u.s government it's just a shortcut but and then they roll in with water fluoridation and the shots, and suddenly nobody can tie your shoelaces, and you're like Americans, and it's game over, you're dead. Yeah. I think it's just the face of something much darker and bigger and global. Um, and, you know, in Iraq, they were again disarmed in 1991 using the United Nations and were attacked in 2003 after the United Nations was used again to make absolutely certain that Saddam hadn't hidden some stash of WMDs somewhere. And in fact, the U US military, when they invaded, they were still um, afraid of it enough to provide all their soldiers with gas masks. Oh yeah, that's what the UN does. It comes in as the peacekeeper to disarm you, and then NATO comes in with the US and murders everybody. Absolutely. Stay there, man. I tell you, you just, she has a way of crystallizing stuff that it takes me hours to say. Uh, Mimi Alahim, Syrian girl, will give you her Twitter and Facebook. We come back, you can check ours out at Real Alex Jones, and we have links on InfoWars.com and PrisonBody.com. Please follow us, uh, please support us, please get our articles out to everybody. There's a lot of them right now at PrisonPlanet.com. The globalists just don't want to destroy the eight rogue nations on their list. They've already taken down several of them. They want to destroy all independent nations, the family, anything that can stand against them. And when Serial Girl is on with us, Mimi Alahim talking about how they get people to give up their WMDs and then invade and then turn off the water, bring in GMO, bring in fluoride, bring in forced inoculations, cancer rates in are like 14 times what they were in Iraq. These are genocide operations. And they're genociding our troops with the DU and the vaccines and the forced drugging as well. The New World Order, we have a clip of a professor and his students uh, up on Infowars.com today saying, yeah, we need, you know, cut off the food and have genetically engineered bioweapons to get rid of people. And you hear everybody clapping and smiling and it's a big group of graduate students and it's a power trip, folks. And they see it as exterminating cockroaches. So just understand good old boys and others that say, oh, let's kill them Arabs. <laughs> They're killing you too. So drink your fluoride. Uh, Syrian girl, finishing up. we got about four minutes in this segment. Other eloquent points you'd like to make about, I see mainstream articles here saying Assad will still win, but it looks like the globalists aren't going to stop. I mean, what do you expect them to do next? Um, I, I want to make it clear that 
I predict that there's not going to be a no-fly zone. You know, if the U.S. was going to do that, if the if the globalists were going to do that, they would have done it ten red lines ago. Um, the Russian veto wouldn't have stopped them. I think that what they really want to see is disarmament of Syria, and they want to see Syria get balkanized and broken up. Um, you know. Well, yeah, Kissinger yeah. said that's what he wants. Kissinger said that, yeah. He absolutely said it, and it, it was uh, uh, Ron Paul's son, Rand Paul, who said that he heard that they were fighting towards a stalemate as well from another source. So, um, you know, I just wanted to, to that and just to give evidence that, that at the UN, an Israeli ambassador a year ago said that we should expect to see the US, uh, the Syrian government gassing children in the future. And one year later, you know, the smoke clears and the same ambassador said, you know, we, we want to make sure that those Syrian chemical weapons stockpiles don't end up in the hands of Hezbollah. So really, it's not about Syria's children. It's not about, it's about the chemical weapons. You know, it's about getting at them because they don't want to have any country that has a deterrent, not, you know, except for themselves. They want to control all the power, just like they do with the guns. So, well, it's um, like they tricked Saddam to use nerve gas on the Iranians and then later use that to invade him. The Iran-Iraq war was, they're tricking both sides, you know, to attack each other. And um, on, the, on the GMO, you know, Bremer, one of the first things he did in Iraq was allow GMO. And Syria in 2011, Assad banned genetically modified food. So there's definitely these games happening with Monsanto, you know, being one of the corporate war mongers, the, the, the dogs of war, as sure. they call them. Well, Mimi, you know, it came out in the London Telegraph and BBC that Assad's people listen to this show. And I can't believe these governments aren't sophisticated enough to figure this stuff out on their own. I'm not being cynical. It's just that like Assad's dad sending him stuff, Infowars, them. I mean, I don't understand why these governments are so rigid. They can't even figure this out. Like, why did the Arabs and the Persians let the West trick them into killing each other? Just, I don't, I don't understand this. Why do they have to listen to me to figure this out? I think, um, you know, people's <sighs> hatred of each other can be easily fueled. And that's what we're, you know, it's divide and conquer. And it, the na your neighbor, you know, your brother becomes an enemy worse than, than the enemy that's actually pulling your strength, both of, both of you from far away. And you know, I saw it happen in Iraq. I saw it happen all over the place. Libya, of course. So, Well, Syrian girl, I'd like to get you on the nightly news since this is all unfolding. I know we got you up very early over in Australia, so you can give us a full and uninterrupted report uh, with one of our reporters. If you want to do that, we'll set that up right now. We can dial you up in the next 10 minutes and do that for the nightly news uh, if you'd like. Please tell the crew. Thank you very much, uh, Mimi.